What we're gonna do now is we're going to start to write our class that is gonna control our video playback. So I'm gonna add this to the video player game object. So I'm gonna select that, add component, and I'm going to make a new script called world space video, create it and add it. Let's drag that into our scripts folder and double click it to open it for editing. Now, the first thing that we wanna be able to do uh, is to play and pause our video. Let's make the font bigger. And so I'm going to add a new public function because this is gonna be called from outside the class. We're gonna call it play pause. Now, we're gonna need a reference to our video player. I'm gonna make that private because the script is attached to the same game object, we can just do get component. Now, you'll notice as I start to type video, we don't get any autocomplete, and that is because we need to add the using unityengine.video namespace. This is the general trend in Unity that all new features are getting put into their own namespaces. Um, so just something good to be aware of. So we're gonna make a private video player, which we'll call imaginatively video player. And in, let's add an awake function, which is where I like to do my get component calls. So we're gonna say video player equals get component video player. So we're gonna get and store a reference to the video player in awake. Then in play pause, we're going to check if video player dot is playing, right? This is a Boolean value that we can use to check if the video player is currently playing. And if it is playing, we are going to pause. So we're gonna call video player dot pause. So if we click the play button while the video is playing, it's gonna pause and else, if it's not playing, it's going to start playing. Now, one little piece of feedback that I wanna give the user is I want the play button to change its icon. So I'm gonna add, let's add them above since they're gonna be public. I'm gonna add a public material called play button material, and I'm gonna add a public material called pause button material, and we're just gonna swap between these as we enter and exit play mode. I'm also gonna add a public reindeer, a public renderer uh, called screen renderer, renderer, which we are going to use to, we're gonna get a reference to to set the materials. So when we want to pause, that's gonna mean that now the next action is gonna be to play, right? So once we've paused, we wanna show the play button icon uh, because we're gonna start playing again. And here we're gonna do the opposite and switch to the pause button material. So let's save that. Jump over to Unity and set those references. So I've already created these materials for us. So we have the pause button mat, play button mat, and a reference to the render, right? Which is gonna be the video screen game object. Now, what we need is the ability to interact with this. So I'm going to create a simple little interaction system using the existing ray casting behavior in this uh, project. So this project is a kind of a very lightly customized version of the shooting with Raycast tutorial, which you can find at unity3d.com slash learn in the let's try section of the site. And this is, there's a, a video on YouTube that uh, explains all about how this is done and you can 
download the assets for that separate from this if you want to uh, to learn about that. So I'm not going to explain all of uh, what goes on in this Raycast Shoot Complete script that we're using. Um, but what we are going to add is a couple of little scripts that are going to allow us to interact with these buttons. So I'm going to make a new C Sharp script that's going to be called Shootable UI. And open it for editing. So this is going to be an abstract class. It's never going to be actually instantiated. It's just going to allow us to create a template for other classes that will inherit from it. So here we're going to have a public abstract function uh, that returns void called shot click. And so what this is going to allow us to do is any shootable UI button will have the shot click function. So if we shoot something, it's just going to say, oh, I got a click. I'm going to do whatever it is that I'm supposed to do when clicked, right? And this is going to prevent us from cluttering up our scripts with if it's the play button, do this, or if it's the pause button, do that. So this is just a little quick way to kind of make that a little bit more flexible. So we have this really simple little abstract class, and then we're going to make a class that inherits from it. So we're going to create another C Sharp script called play button control. And let's add this to our video player. The play button cube here is a child of the video player game object. And we're just going to drag this on there and double click it to open it for editing. Delete start and update. And now this is going to inherit from shootable UI. And here I'm just going to type public override and then that's going to bring up shot click as a possible override. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to create the, the braces for me. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to, oh, and actually there's one other thing I want to add to shootable UI, which is that we're going to have a reference to the world space video player because all our buttons, this will be public all our buttons are going to have a reference to the video player because they're going to interact with it. So we're going to have a public world space video called world space video. Save that. And now that can be used in the classes that inherit from it, right? So we're going to say world place video dot play pause. So when this button is clicked, it's going to call the play pause function. And then the last piece that we need to add is really simple as well in Raycast Shoot Complete, we just need to call this when we shoot something. So down at the bottom of the update function under where it says, if hit rigid body does not equal null, et cetera, outside of those braces, we're gonna add a new if statement, or first we're gonna declare a shootable UI called shot UI. And then we're gonna say shot UI equals hit dot collider. And so this is a Raycast hit that is uh, already declared further up in the script up here. So this is the thing that we shot hit dot collider dot get component shootable UI. So basically, we're going to attempt to get a reference to some shootable UI on the object that we shot. And then we're going to check if shot UI does not equal null, right? Meaning the thing actually did have a shootable UI attached to it. Then we're going to call shot UI dot shot click, right? We're going to call the shot click function. So this way we don't need to know what this thing does. All we need to know is that it responds to shot click, right? We can call shot click on it. Uh, and that is that. So now so I'm going to do control shift S to save all my scripts, make sure I didn't forget anything. Let's return to unity. Let it compile. So far, so good. And now if we I'm just going to temporarily mute audio, so we don't have to listen to like the footsteps and stuff and play. And now, oh, it's still auto playing. Let's exit play mode, go to the video player, turn off play on awake now. And play. Oh, of course, I forgot to set the references, right? So I'm getting a no reference exception, as you can see in the console. Uh, because I forgot to set my references 
to my video player in the play button, right? So we have our world space video here. It's none. This is, you know, if you get a no reference exception, it's usually because you forgot to drag a reference. And so we're going to drag in the video player game object into here, right? So it can now interact with the world space video player component. And let's play. And then click play. Whoa. That's funny. That's exciting. It's not the intended effect, right? You see what I did? I dragged the play button into the, uh... <laughs> whoops, video player. I dragged the, I don't know, that is the screen. Wait a minute. Oh, 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 that's funny. Okay, hold on. <laughs> that's not what we wanted to see. In my world space video, screen renderer dot material, not the screen renderer. Oh, der. It's not the screen renderer that we want. It is the, okay, here's a little tip for you. Right click, refactor, rename. This is the play button renderer. That was funny though. So now that, that'll change that and it'll change uh, all the other instances. Save. That was good. Okay, and now the screen, we don't want to change, we want the play button renderer to be the play button. <laughs> okay. Hit play, our video plays, we get our pause button down here where it should be instead of, <laughs> instead of on the screen, Durr. and then we play and it goes back to a, uh, we pause and it goes back to the play button, right, to indicate that's what's gonna happen next when we click. So we can play, we can pause, and all is well with the world. So we're going to use that a little bit later for the uh, next clip button, um, but that is good for now. So in the next segment, we are going to set up the ability to change clips using this same approach. Yeah, uh, on Mac, I think it's com com Command R to change, to refactor, but on Windows, I'm pretty sure it's F2.